Greetings to those who watch below. Just a quick thing before we start today's video. As I'm sure you're all aware, in two weeks time, it's Halloween. So from next Wednesday, I'll be having a full week of videos running up to the big day. Videos dealing with fear. But for today's video, let's go to a place where our fears, even our most primal ones, can be realised quite easily. That's right. We're going to the woods. 1. This story takes place in August of 2013, in the mountains of Southern Oregon. I am a US Air Force Security Forces Airman, basically a military policeman. My girlfriend was at work, and as a swelteringly hot day began to turn into thunderstorms, my buddy Nick and I decided to go and explore some back roads and get out of the heat in town. Southern Oregon is crisscrossed with logging roads, some actively used, and many totally forgotten and grown over. Nick and I spent many of our days off starting on roads that we knew, finding roads we didn't know, driving for hours into the mountains, eventually navigating back to paved roads. On this particular day, with storm clouds building over the mountains, we set off on a road we had never been on, and began to drive into them. After driving for around an hour, we hadn't seen nor heard any signs of other people in the woods. We rounded a bend in the thick fir woods, and emerged in a meadow that was totally surrounded by thick aspen groves. The meadow was perfectly flat, and eerily still. We both noticed the strange stillness almost immediately. No birds, hardly any insect noise, no squirrels, and certainly no other people. On the far side of the meadow, right at the edge of the tree line, there was a picnic table. The table was odd, however. It was painted a bright orange, and was much larger than a typical picnic table in a park. Remarking on this, Nick drove through the meadow to get a closer look. I remember being apprehensive as we approached. The whole scenario was exceptionally strange. The overall silence of the aspen grove was unsettling, also, it was nearly impossible to see far into the trees, as aspens grow extremely close together. When we parked by the table, I hopped out of the passenger seat of the truck to check it out. Now, I'm not very tall, I'm only about 5 foot 5. Regardless, the table was ridiculously oversized and practically unusable. The seats were nearly at chest level, meaning I would have to climb up to even sit on them. As I was looking at the table, Nick called me over to the truck, and I noticed he was looking back into the aspens. At first, I couldn't see what he was looking at, but then I noticed a splash of colour that was completely out of place in the thick trees. A small, one-man tent was set back in the trees, about 50 feet from the strange table. I had an initial feeling of dread, and felt certain that there was someone in the tent, and if we could see the tent, they could see us. There were no campgrounds in this area, no people, no main roads for miles. Surely, someone camping so remotely would be at the very least a strange person. However, as we observed the tent, we didn't see any movement or hear any sounds coming from it. Nick suggested I call out. I didn't want to, but I did. Hey, anyone in there? I yelled. No reply. Feeling completely on edge, Nick and I thought about driving away and leaving this strange area. We began to fear the worst. What if there was a body in the tent? What if somebody had gotten kidnapped? Foolish, I know, but we thought it all the same. After some debate, we decided to have Nick turn the truck around to drive away from the camp. Should we need to leave in a hurry, he would be waiting behind the wheel. With my heart pounding, I started walking through the trees towards the tent. I was totally keyed up with my senses on full alert. When I reached the campsite, several things struck me as odd. Backpacks were scattered all over. No fire had been built. No wood collected. The tent was literally full of backpacks and women's clothing. Full of dread. I turned to leave and tell Nick what I had seen. As I left, 
I heard Nick start yelling. Let's go. Let's get the fuck out of here. Not knowing why he was yelling, I ran back up to the truck. When I broke out of the trees, I saw a beat-up old Ford Taurus on the road, blocking us from leaving the meadow. I immediately leapt into the passenger seat, and Nick floored the gas pedal. The car was occupied by two men. A third person was lying against the window in the back. As we drove across the meadow, the driver attempted to block us from the road, but Nick drove around them and accelerated the way we had come from. I looked back and saw the car attempting to turn around on the narrow road. Nick drove like a madman, and though I was honestly terrified that they would catch up, we hit the highway without seeing the car again. I still don't know if the person in the back was male or female. I called the state police, and they promised to send a trooper out to check out the scene. However, I received a call the next day from a trooper, stating that the campsite, the backpacks, and the women's clothing were all gone, though we could tell people had been in the area. The strange table was still by the thick aspen grove. I have not returned to that area, and I do not intend to. Two. I was in Kohutta, in the North Georgia wilderness, for seven days scouting for bears, wild hog, and deer. I had hiked in about ten miles, and then went off trail for another three to five miles. Basically, I was out in the middle of nowhere. Since I was alone, I was using a hammock that has a built-in bug net, and I had a rain fly over it. I spent about three days halfway up a mountain, just looking for a good place to hunt. I saw three or four good-sized bears, about ten hogs, and came across some good-sized deer. On the fourth day, I was going to head down to a small stream that I had marked on my GPS, and then set up camp, restock on water, and prep for the two-day hike back. I could have gone faster, but I wanted to be able to look for any animal signs along the way. As I approached this small stream, I noticed a tent which I was excited to see. As I had been completely alone for a few days, and it's always nice to run into another hiker. As I got close to the tent, I noticed that there was a small pack on the ground just outside of it. I figured the person couldn't have been too far from where the camp was, so I set up my camp about 30 yards away, and with about 4 hours of daylight left, started cooking some dinner. Two hours later, I was starting to wonder where this person was. Given that I was in the wilderness, and it was a one plus day hike out, there wasn't much I could do. But I did hike around the site, making a circle as I went out, to look for any signs of struggle in case of a bear attack, or maybe that they had an injury. I got about a quarter of a mile from the campsite, walking a circle, but I didn't find anything. As night came, no one showed. I started to fire, in the hope that the person would be able to find where they set up, and have some light. Fires burn really bright, and are very easy to see from far away. After eating, searching, and hoping that the person was going to make it back, I called it a night. I had a small flask with me, and took a couple of sips of whiskey, jumped into my hammock with my pistol, and attempted to go to sleep. I sleep pretty hard, I mean really hard, regardless of where I am. It literally annoys my friends, because I can always seem to fall asleep, and stay asleep, regardless of where in the world we are. But this night was different. I felt like something was off, but I figured it was just me worrying about this person, who by all accounts, was completely missing. So for the first time in my life, I woke up to the sound of what I thought was footsteps. But not in the sense of footsteps on leaves, but what a heavy-footed person would make walking on an old wood floor. It was extremely loud. I got my gun, grabbed my headlamp, and waited to see if it would stop. Right at that moment, it did. Then I saw something that scared the shit out of me on my rainfly. The gleam of a flashlight. Faint, but there. I shouted, hello? And right when I did, it sounded like ten people suddenly running away from me in every direction. I dropped out of my hammock on the ground, frantically turning on my headlamp, shining it all around me but I didn't see shit. My heart was racing pretty bad, 
but I thought it might just have been the reflection of the moon on the rainfly. Yeah, that was it. And those footsteps running away from me were probably armadillos or something, even though their eyes shine and they're pretty easy to spot. Problem was, there was no moon. I'd never seen an armadillo above 2,000 foot, and for some reason, the campsite I'd set up by was gone. The fire had been put out by water. It was apparent because there was not a damp coal in the thing. I thought for sure it was around 4am, but I'd only been sleeping about an hour. At this point I wanted to leave, but hiking out in the wilderness while it's dark is always a bad idea. So I grabbed my flask, took a swig of whiskey, and removed my rainfly so I could see out of my hammock and around the area I was in, and tried my hardest to go to sleep. I was laying down when I saw some light hit the trees above me. It was clear it was coming from downstream, and I got out of my hammock and started yelling, Hey, you all need some help? No response. I saw whatever it was putting out the light, and it spun in round and started heading downstream really fast. By this point, my body had pumped more adrenaline than it had blood, and I was exhausted from it all. I was finally able to sleep, and woke up around 7am. When I did, I noticed that my water filter I had left out was missing. It's a gravity filter, and hangs on a tree filtering water down into my main bladder that I put in my backpack. And my water bladder looked like it had been cut down the middle with a knife. They cut down my bear bag, and took some of the food inside. The creepiest part of all was that they went through my bag, which was under my hammock, while I was sleeping. I checked the bear bag before I went back to sleep the second time, and it was still there, hanging, and the bag under my hammock hadn't been touched. I packed all my shit and hightailed it out of there, keeping my pistol close to me and moving as fast as I could. I ended up making the hike back in just under 15 hours. I hiked part of the trail at night, because I wasn't about to spend another night out there. I didn't see anybody else on my hike out, and there were no cars parked at the trailhead, and the DNR said that they had only seen my car there. Since then, I haven't gone out there without any friends. 3. This story happened to my sister, and her friend when they were 14. It takes place in a town called Windsor in the UK. The area where my sister's friend lives is a little bit further out from the main city centre, and is quite rural, middle class, and quiet. My sister was staying a few days with her friend in the summer, in her house, which is huge, and has a big garden that has a small fence at the end, behind which is a shallow stream and a foresty type thing. One day, they decided to walk down the stream in wellies to a rope swing that her friend's dad had constructed the previous summer. As they walked down, they kept hearing a rustling sound from the trees just beyond the stream, but thought nothing of it, because it sounded a bit like birds and other smaller creatures. They arrived at the stream, and all seemed fine for a while. About 15 minutes later, they heard a stronger rustling, and a bald man in a long black coat came out and watched them from the other side of the stream. They both looked at him, and then each other for a moment, and both girls screamed and waded back along the river. Looking back, my sister saw the man put both his hands on his ears, and as they ran, all they heard was this man's creepy moaning sound. Anyway, they rounded a bend in the stream, slowed down, and started to walk home. My friend suggested the man might be mentally disabled, and may need help. So they went back to the house to get her dad. As they neared the house, the man popped out again from behind the bushes and started staring again. They got the fuck out of there pretty quickly. Getting back to the house, they got the friend's dad, described the events, and the three of them went back into the woods. They searched both of the areas where the man had popped out of the bushes. When they searched the bushes near the rope swing, they came across a dirty tent. The dad called out to see if anyone was inside, and when he got no reply, he unzipped the tent, and inside, found loads of knives and other random but dangerous looking kitchen utensils. 
This is the bit I've never really understood. Instead of noping out of there and calling the police, the dad took the weapons and carried them to a deeper part of the stream where he threw them in. He then deconstructed the tent and they left. Weird. My first reaction would be to call 999 and scream about how I'd found a murderer's lair. It transpired later, when the whole event was over, that my sister's friend had regularly gone down to the stream by herself, and had heard people in the bushes before. 4. This happened to me and my sister back in 2008. We're from the Netherlands, a little village I guess called Wiesenhof, which is part of the city of Nijmegen, and there's a circular path around the wooded section of our neighbourhood. Our backyard faced a pond, and you had to walk along the pond for a couple of minutes before you'd enter the woods. Right away it had a path, which would go in a large circle around. Usually people took their dogs out there, or were just jogging. You know, the typical average everyday stuff. The park was absolutely beautiful though. Me and my family always took our dogs out in that woods. The circle took around 20 to 30 minutes to walk, so it was a good length walk for everybody. I was around 10 at the time, and my sister was 14. She decided to take our dogs out, and asked me to come along, bearing in mind that I didn't really have much to do, I agreed. So we were walking the normal path with our two dogs. I was holding our bigger dog, whose name was Jip, and was the typical alpha male who always wanted to be up front. Our smaller dog, Evie, was typically very calm and always liked taking her time, so she was sniffing areas for a good length of time. Jip was getting particularly anxious and wanted to keep on walking. I told my sister I'd be a bit further up while she let Evie finish up her sniffing. My sister was fine with that. We live in a super safe area, just your typical Western European village. No troublemakers around, just a super clean cut area so we never assumed anything could go wrong. It just never occurred to us. While I had turned the corner of the forest path, I looked back and saw Evie, who was still profusely sniffing. So I walked a bit further, out of sight of my sister. Not even a minute later, my sister came frantically around the corner, hurrying Evie along, and told me to keep walking. I saw the fear on her face, and did as I was told. On the way home, she was deadly silent, not saying anything. I, of course, was scared, and didn't know how to react, so was just keeping up with her pace. Once we made it home, I asked her what happened, and she said that she had seen a man, dressed as a mine, staring at her from behind a tree, and that she tried to act like she didn't notice, but her facial expression must have given her away, as when she started walking, the mime started following her. Not on the path though, but systematically behind each tree. She swore every time she looked back, he was behind the next tree. Apparently, when she turned the corner, she couldn't see him anymore. I didn't really know what to think. I had felt bad that I had gone ahead with Jip, but my ten-year-old mind didn't really assume that anything could go wrong in such a safe area which is why it came across as even more of a shock. My sister hasn't said anything further about the incident since that day, but she knew for certain that she saw a man dressed as a mime. It didn't seem to affect her too much afterwards, luckily, but it must have been quite a scare knowing that she was by herself and that some freak dressed up as a mime was following her. Five. Recently, I moved to an island in the South Pacific and have gotten the hiking bug, so I try and get out to new locations as much as I possibly can. This happened about two weeks ago. Since I live in the South Pacific region, it gets mighty hot, driving all but the most insane hikers indoors unless it's at night. Of course, I'm not a masochist, so I try to do all my hiking in the early hours of the morning or in the evening, when it starts to get cool. I've never been afraid of going hiking by myself. I did it when I lived in Oregon, 
and never ran into any problems with it. But my island isn't my friendly home state, so I always carry pepper spray, and when I used to go hiking in Montana and Wyoming, I would sometimes carry a handgun to ward off anything I couldn't take on, whether it was a bear or a person, but I had always been considerably lucky. I got to the trailhead about 6.30 in the evening. The trail was called Thousand Steps, but in all honesty, it was mostly just a walk straight down to the cliff and then a gruelling journey back up. I didn't want to go, but my dog, Moxie, needed to be walked, and I'd done the hike so many times I could probably do it in my sleep. The first thing I noticed when I pulled up was an old, rickety, rusted out blue pickup with a big plastic tarp over the bed to keep out the rain. These are pretty common on the island, affectionately earning them the nickname Guam Bombs. I didn't think much of it, as I hooked up Moxie and started heading down the trail, trying my best to ignore the mosquitoes that were making a meal out of my exposed neck. Heading down the trail was relatively easy, avoiding the banana spiderwebs. I felt the stress of my day slowly unwind, as the underbrush grew darker and night approached. I made it all the way down to the water's edge, when I noticed a man standing about a hundred yards away. It was dark enough now that I could only see his silhouette, so I have no idea if he was looking at me or at the water, but I chose to ignore him and instead pulled Moxie's ball from my backpack and threw it for her a few times to get all her wiggles out. After some time, the man started walking over to me and stopped maybe about 10 feet away. Now, I'm not a tiny waif of a woman. I'm 23 and stand at about 5'6", and this guy was just a couple of inches taller than me, but most of the locals were on the smaller side, but something about him just felt... weird. Evening? I greeted as he nodded and looked down at Moxie, who had just returned from running after her ball. I stooped down to pet her now humidity-soaked head as the man kept his eyes trained on my dog. Can I help you, sir? Pretty dog, he responded mildly. You alone? I have my dog, I said lamely, trying to sound braver than I was feeling. I'm never alone. I tried to emphasize on the fact that I had my dog with me, but the man seemed unfazed by my statement. Oh, have a good night. With that, he turned around and started walking back towards the trailhead. I watched his shadow disappear into the trees and waited for about half an hour before I, too, started walking back towards the path, my mind on high alert as Moxie pulled me through the trees and up the cliffside. The crickets pierced the night as I climbed the steps, illuminated by my flashlight. My hands were full of Moxie's leash and my light, but you could bet your buns that I would have my pepper spray out if I had an extra hand. Finally, my light pierced the trees at the top, and I practically booked it up the hill. When I got to the top, I nearly shat myself. The rusted blue pickup was sitting in the parking lot still, but their passenger side door was practically touching my car driver's side. Inside the car, I could faintly see two men sitting in the cab, and could feel them watching me. Slowly, I approached my car, walking as far over to the passenger side as I could, and kept Moxie close with me, as I opened the door and crawled over to the driver's side. At that moment, the door of the pickup flew open, and my dog started going apeshit, barking at the two people who were now outside of their car and trying to break into mine. Heart in my chest, I ran my keys into the ignition, and tore out of the parking lot so quickly that I nearly took my mirror off. I called my mum as soon as I got home, and she begged me to call the police. Unfortunately, the police here on the island aren't as vigilant as they are on the mainland, and that area is known for car thefts, muggings, and other debaucheries, as I learned from my co-workers later that week. Earlier this month, another girl actually disappeared from that area without a trace, and it makes me wonder if the men in the blue pickup truck didn't have something to do with it. If I hadn't had Moxie with me, would I have been mugged? Or worse? 
if I learned anything from this experience, is that for my lady hikers, please always take a pepper spray with you, go hiking in groups, and always let someone know where you're going. It might save your life someday. Greetings again to those who watch below. I really hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please make sure to like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when the latest creepy video hits. If you have a tale that you want telling, please make sure you let me know via my email in the description box below. So, until next time, sleep tight.